Good day everyone, I am Junior Estolada from BSME 1B. In this video, I would like to share and discuss to you the topics that were assigned to me and then later on, we will try to solve them after the discussion of each topic. The topics that were assigned to me are namely functions, limits and continuity, higher order derivatives, the derivative of exponential and logarithmic functions, and the derivative of hyperbolic and inverse hyperbolic functions. So first, let us discuss and get to know functions. Function is a relationship between a set of independent inputs and a set of dependent outputs where exactly one is related after each input. So we can assume that y is a function of x or it is normal to call a function either f of x. We should write it in a symbol y is equals to f of x. For example, if f of x is equals to 3x minus 6, find x where x is 5. So first thing we need to do, we need to copy the first d function, f of x is equals to 3x minus 6. And then next is we need to substitute the value of x which is 5. So f of 5 is equals to 3 times 5 minus 6. 3 times 5 minus 6 is equals to 9. So therefore, f5 is equals to 9 and that's how you get the value of a function now let us move on to the operations of functions as we all know in basic mathematics there are four basic operations namely addition subtraction multiplication and division however in operations of functions the operations are namely the sum of functions the difference of functions the product of functions the quotient of functions and the composite functions which we will be discussing later on so let us solve for the sum of functions let's say f of x is equals to 2x plus 6 and g of x is equals to x squared minus 3 solve for f plus g so in order to solve for the sum of the function all you have to do is add them so f plus g is equals to 2x plus 6 plus x squared minus 3 and then combine like terms from what I see we can only combine 6 and 3 so f plus g is equals to x squared plus 2x plus 3 and that's how you solve for the sum of functions next let us solve for the difference of functions with the same equation f of x is equals to 2x plus 6 and g of x is equals to x squared minus 3 so repeat the same process but let us be cautious about the sign. So f minus g is equals to 2x plus 6 minus the quantity of x squared minus 3. So f of g is equals to negative x squared plus 2x plus 9. And this is the difference of the function. Now what about products of functions? Let us use the same equation f of x is equals to 2x plus 6 and g of x is equals to x squared minus 3. So f times g is equals to the quantity of 2x plus 6 times the quantity of x squared minus 3. So 2x times x squared is equals to 2x cubed. 2x times negative 3 is 6x. 6 times x squared is 6x squared. And then positive 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. So, f of g is equals to 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus 6x minus 18. And this is how we get the product of the function. Now let's go and try to solve the quotient of the functions with the same equation we have. f of x is equals to 2x plus 6 and g of x is equals to x squared minus 3. So let's say we will find the value of f2 over g3. So in order to get the value that we are looking for, let us first solve for f2. f2 is equals to 2 times 2 plus 6. We just substitute the x to the value given by the problem. So f2 is equals to 10. Now let us solve for g3. g3 is equals to 3 squared minus 3. 3 squared is 9 minus 3 is 6. So g3 is 6. Now that we have all the values that we need, 
just go back to the equation we are solving. So F2 over G3 is equal to 10 over 6. We can still simplify this by dividing 2 to both numbers. So F2 over G3 is equal to 5 over 3. And that's how you solve for the quotient of functions. So let us now solve for composite functions with the same equation that we have. f of x is equal to 2x plus 6. g of x is equal to x squared minus 3. Suppose that we find f of g. In this case, g of x is inside f of x. So we can assume that f of g is equal to f g of x. So how can we find f of g of x? First, let us substitute the value of g of x. So f of g is equal to f x squared minus 3. So now we can prove that g of x is inside f of x. So in order to solve this function, we need to substitute x to the value of f of x. So f of g is equal to 2 x squared minus 3 plus 6. So now let us distribute the given values. f of g is equal to 2x squared minus 6 plus 6. So the final answer of f of g is equal to 2x squared. That's how you solve for composite functions. We are done discussing functions. Now let us move on to limits and continuity. So we are done discussing functions. So now let's move on to limits and continuity. Let's first discuss limits and then later on, we will discuss continuity. What do we mean by limits? A limit is the value that the function approaches as in input that approaches some values. Suppose f of x is a close to a particular value l as c is close to some value a. Then we say l is the limit of f of x as x approaches a. We write this as the limitation of f of x as x approaches a is equals to l. So how do we find the value of limit? We find the value of limits by plugging in the x values. For example, evaluate the limit of 5x plus 2 as x approaches 1. So in order for us to determine the value of limits, we say the limitation of 5x plus 2 as x approaches 1 is equals to the limitation of 5x as x approaches 1 plus the limitation of 2 as x approaches 1. So we say 5 times 1 plus 2. So the limitation of 5x plus 2 as x approaches 1 is equals to 7. So to put it in general, we simply plug in the value of x as to how much it approaches. In this problem, x approaches to 1. So we substituted 1 to the value of x, and that's how we get the answer 7, as the limitation of 5x plus 2 as x approaches to 1. And that's how you solve for the value of limits. So now let's go on to continuity. What do we mean by continuity? A function can be called a continuity at x is equals to a, if and only if the three conditions are met. First, the function is defined at x is equals to a. That is, f a equals a real number. Number two, if the limit exists. And three, the limit of the function as x approaches a is equal to the function value at x is equals to a. And if a function doesn't meet the three conditions, therefore, it is a discontinuity. So there are three types of discontinuity. So first is the whole discontinuity, where it happens when the limit exists and are the same but the function defined x is equals to a seems to be different or it does not exist. Second is jump discontinuity happens when the limits both exist but are different. Third is the infinite discontinuity happens when the limits result to an infinity value and can also be called an asymptomatic discontinuity. Now let us try to solve whether the function is continuity or discontinuity. Let's say that the function is f of x is equal to 3x plus 5, where x is less than negative 1. x squared plus 3, where x is greater than negative 1. And 2x plus 5, where x is equal to negative 1. 
solve if this function meets the three conditions for it to be called a continuity using the three-step continuity test. And if not, determine what type of discontinuity it is. So first, we need to see to it that the function is defined at exactly negative 1. So f negative 1 is equals to 2 times negative 1 plus 5 is equals to 3. So therefore, the function is defined. So step 2, we need to prove that the limit exists. So the limits of f of x as x approaches negative 1 from the left side is equals to 2. And the limits of f of x as x approaches negative 1 from the right side is equals to 4. Now we notice that the value from the right and left side are not the same or it does not match. Therefore, the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x does not exist. And if the limit does not exist, it is not continuous at exactly negative 1. From here, we can say that the function is discontinuous at x is equal to negative 1. And because the values from the left and right side does not match, this type of discontinuity is called a jump discontinuity because the limits both exist but are not the same. And that's how you solve a function, whether it is a continuous or a discontinuous function. So now let's move on to the third topic. And it's all about higher order derivatives. What do we mean by higher order derivatives? Higher order derivatives, it refers to the repeated process of taking derivatives of derivatives. The derivative of the first derivative is called the second derivative, and the derivative of the second derivative is called the third derivative, and so on. With this, the derivative of y with respect to x is itself a function of x and it may in turn be differentiated. So now let's move on to our example. Find the first derivative of the function y is equals to the quantity of 2x plus 4 cubed. So in getting the first derivative of the function y is equals to the, the quantity of 2x plus 4 cubed is first finding the derivative of the exponent and the derivative of the value that are inside the parentheses. So y prime is equals to bring down the exponent down so it would be 3 times the quantity of 2x plus 4 and you will subtract 1 to the original exponent which will be 3 minus 1 is equals to 2 so it will be y prime is equals to 3 times the quantity of 2x plus 4 squared next you will find the derivative of the values that are inside the parentheses in this function it is 2x plus 4 Next, we then copy y prime is equals to 3 times the quantity of 2x plus 4 squared. And the derivative of 2x plus 4, which is 2, since the derivative of 4 is 0, and the derivative of 2x is 2. And then last, you will multiply the constant numbers, which is 2 and 3, in this case. So y prime is equals to 3 times 2 is equals to 6 times the quantity of 2x plus 4 squared. So that's how we can get the first derivative of a function. How about the second derivative of the function y is equals to 2x plus 4 cubed? So in getting the second derivative of the function y is equal to the quantity of 2x plus 4 cubed, it's just the same as what, they did, what we did to find the first derivative of the function. But we will start from our first derivative, which is y prime is equal to 6 times the quantity of 2x plus 4 squared. So, same process, we will get the derivative of the exponent and the derivative of the values inside the parentheses. So first, we need to put 6 outside the bracket, so it will be y to the second derivative equals 6, and then bring down the exponent, which is 2, times the quantity of 2x plus 4. And then you will subtract 1, so it is 2 minus 1 is equal to 0. Next, we need to find the derivative of the values that are inside the parentheses. So, y to the second derivative is equal to 6 times 2 times the quantity of 2x plus 4. And the derivative of the values inside the parentheses, which is 2x plus 4, is 2, since the derivative of 4 is 0 and 2x is 2. 
Next step is we need to multiply the constant numbers inside the bracket. So we say y to the second derivative is equals to 6 times 2 times 2 is 4 times the quantity of 2x plus 4. And lastly, we then need to multiply the constant number inside the bracket. So we say y to the second derivative is equals to 6 times 4 is equals to 24 times the quantity of 2x plus 4. And that's how you get the final answer. Or that's how you get or that's how to get the second derivative of a function. So that's how you solve and get the higher order derivatives of a function. So let's move on to our next topic, which is the derivative of exponential and logarithmic function. First, let us define our topic. Derivative of exponential function. Exponential function notes that f of x is equals to e raised to x has the special property that its derivative is the function itself. f of x is equals to e raised to x is equals to f of x. Let's say for example, what is the derivative of e raised to x? So in solving exponential function, we need to keep in mind the formula in getting the derivative of exponential function. So the derivative of e raised to u, where u is a function, is going to be the same thing, e raised to u times the derivative of u. So in this case, the derivative of e raised to x is going to be e raised to x times the derivative of x, which is 1. So our final answer is simple, e raised to x. Now let's try another example. Let's try and find the derivative of e raised to 4x plus 2. So first, we need to rewrite the expression that we have. So that is e raised to 4x plus 2, and then times the derivative of 4x plus 2, which is 4. So the answer is 4e raised to 4x plus 2. Now in some cases, the base may not be e, it might be something else. For instance, we have to find the derivative of 5 raised to x. So the derivative of a raised to u, where a represents a number, is equals to a raised to u times the derivative of u times l and a. If we compare that to e raised to u, which was e raised to u times the derivative of u, there is supposed to be an ln e, but the natural log of e is 1, so that part is unnecessary. So we need to use this formula. So the derivative of 5 raised to x is equal to 5x times the derivative of x, which is 1, and then times ln a or ln 5. And that's the answer of our example. And that's how you solve for the derivative of exponential functions. So now let us move on to the derivative of logarithmic functions. So the derivative of logarithmic function is the logarithmic de derivation of function f is defined by the formula where f prime is the derivative of f. To find the derivative of other logarithmic function, you must use the change of base formula. So, log base a x is equals to ln x over ln a. Using this formula, you can derive logarithmic functions with any base. Let's say, for example, what is the derivative of log base 5 of x? Here's the formula. The derivative of log base a of u is equals to u prime divided by u times ln a. In this case, u is x, u prime is 1, which is the derivative of x, and a is the base, so that is 5. So the answer is going to be 1, which is u prime, over x, which is u, times ln a or ln 5. So it's 1 over x times ln 5. That's how you solve for the derivation of logarithmic functions. So now let us move on to our last topic, 
which is the, the derivative of hyperbolic and inverse hyperbolic. Let's start with the derivative of hyperbolic function. The hyperbolic function are essential in application problems in physics and engineering in which quantities of interest are described, not by explicit functions, but by differential function equations, I mean. Hyperbolic functions closely resemble those for the trigonometric functions. So here are the six hyperbolic function that has been derived to solve for hyperbolic equation. These formulas will be our guide in solving hyperbolic as we go over to our example. For example, what is the derivative of the function hyperbolic tangent of 4x? All you have to do is to use the chain rule. So the derivative of hyperbolic tangent is hyperbolic second squared of 4x. And then we need to multiply this by the derivative of 4x, which is 4. And then we could just move 4 to front, and then that's the answer. Now let us go to the inverse hyperbolic function. Inverse hyperbolic function are the inverse functions of the hyperbolic functions for a given value of a hyperbolic function. The corresponding inverse hyperbolic function provides the corresponding hyperbolic angle. So these are the formulas of the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic function. These formulas can help in getting the inverse hyperbolic functions as we go to our example. For example, find the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic function y is equals to x squared times the inverse hyperbolic sine times 2x. So in order to get the derivative, we just need to use the product rule, which is y prime is equals to the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, and then we will copy the second portion plus x squared. And then in this part, we then will have to use our formula on, on the inverse hyperbolic sine h. And the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic sine h is 1 over the square root of 1 plus whatever is inside the parentheses. And in this problem, it is 2x. And then we square it up just by the chain rule. We then need to multiply the derivative of 2x, which is 2. Next thing we need to do is we can factor out the function by 2x. So it will be y prime is equals to 2x times the inverse hyperbolic sine times 2x plus we pull out 2x. So we still have x left. So x over the square root of 1 plus 4x squared. And that is our answer for this problem. That concludes my discussion of the topics that have been assigned to me. I hope that you learned something about my discussion. Thank you for listening. I am Junri Estaliada from BSME1B. Thank you so much and have a great day.